everyone. Surprise, surprise. Angelo Kante seems to be injured again. And we've also got the news of uh, Aurelien Chomeny to Real Madrid, as you can see. So let's react to these couple of situations. Yeah, we could have, we should have had Chomeny a long time back. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Angola Kante has left the French camp due to a knee injury. Let's react to this situation. Let's react to Schermini to Real Madrid as well, which is now confirmed. We knew that was coming anyway. Um, the fact that our scouts said uh, their recommendation uh, at the end of, not the season that just finished, the season before that, uh, was that, Let's wait. Let's wait another season for Aurelien Charmeni. You know? Let's just see how, how things turn out. Yeah, well, uh, we saw how things turned out. And now he's a Real Madrid player. Um, so we'll talk about that on the way Real Madrid has transformed their midfield. You know, The fact that they've got Camavinga and Charmeni, two of the most exciting, young, talented midfielders, on top of Valverde as well that they have. It's just that's how you plan. That's how you look you know, forward to the future. We're going to get into all of that. But getting into now this Angola Kante situation, this is, I mean, what does this mean? This is yet another injury on top of so many little niggly injuries this particular player has had. Is he going to be absolutely fit by the time preseason comes in? Is he actually going to even make it through preseason? Is he, how many minutes are we going to see from this player next season? I love him so much. He's a Chelsea le legend, undoubtedly. And and is a is a very important player. I still believe there's value in Angola Kante, but one must ask, what is that value? Like, if if he's only around as as Thomas Tuchel said last season, forty percent of the time, is is that detrimental to the squad? Do we rather have a particular player that's going to be there for at least 70, 80 percent of the time, as opposed to forty? Because you would consider Angelo Kante as one of the main players in the team. And if your main player is only there 40% and then you have to rely on your secondary players to play 60% of it, well, then the secondary players become main players because they're there 60% of the time. Um, and, and it could be detrimental in the long run with that type of a player, the secondary type of players, to try and carry your midfield because the stuff Angelo Kante does, the engine that he has, the ability to break play down, the countless amount of interceptions, the tackling, the the ability when, when there is a counter to progress the ball from deep to offense in no time um, is, is invaluable. Yeah, there are times where I don't like the way we've deployed Angola Kante, especially against low blocks where he finds himself in KDB positions as a playmaker. That's where I'm like... Mm, I'm not really sure about Angola Kante in a possession-based team, but there is still value in other areas when we play against teams that want to come at us, that want to press, um, and don't, don't want to just sit back and defend. Those are the times where Angola Kante becomes incredible, but where do we stand? Is, is it time now to let go of him? I mean, as I said, I still see value, but I have to be also a bit weary about this whole situation. I'm going to showcase you guys his injury um, list going back from 1920 uh, season. As you can see, season 1920 over here, four days missed, one game, five games missed there uh, for groin injury, knock, hamstring, hamstring injury again, two, two games missed, muscle injury, 112 days missed, um, six games, and then hamstring injury again. 28 days miss seven games. So you've got seven, six, 13, 15, 20, 21 games missed in, in, in a season where we're probably playing around 60 games. So that's that's high number of games that's been missed. The number of days as well, 28 days, 112 days, 14 days, 21 days. And all of these, when, when you're injured, you don't immediately come back. You come from the bench, you slowly pick things up. So it's not like, He's missed whatever number of games that we've said over here, and then immediately he has come back. No, that's not the case. Now, looking at 2021, uh, three days missed, one one game there, 25 days, six games there, 
seven days, there was nothing missed. Uh, so 2021, okay, fair enough, not that bad. Uh, one of them was rest, so it's not really an injury. Hamstring injury again, 25 days. So season 2021, not entirely that bad under, under Frank Lampard. Um, then again, we got knocked out early in the, in the well, in the second round in the Champions League. We got knocked out early, I remember, in the Carabao Cup. Um, and yeah, overall, he, he hasn't missed too many there, but still, the, the recurrence of the muscle injury and hamstring injury has come and, come and hit him hard. Now, 21-22, ladies and gentlemen, groin injury, three, uh, three games missed, two games missed for um, you know, the pandemic situation, knee problem, six games missed. Again, he got that uh, pandemic situation and not a uh, knee problem now at the moment live. 14 days, 4 days, 21 days, 14 days. And these are all massive interruptions as well. Massive, massive interruptions. We saw he was barely around this particular season that just went by. Um, and, and this is the scenario. Um, he's missed 10, 13 games. Um, but even when he was back, it's not like he started too many matches. There was a lot of matches where he came off the bench. So we need to consider that. So... And now this is the latest one with France. Where are we standing in this situation, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, is it time? Engelo Kante, I just want to have a quick look at his, uh, when his contract expires. Uh, I think he's only got one more season left uh, for his particular contract. Um, let, me, let me just bring this up. Um, where's the profile? Uh, let me, yeah. This, this upcoming season will be the, will be the last one um, if we don't look into contract extension. Um, yeah, June 30th, 2023, his market value apparently is 50 million euros. So I guess the question is, is it time? Is it time to let go of him? I want to hear from you guys. How you feel about the whole situation? N'Golo Kante, you got to also consider, you got players like Conor Gallagher waiting in the wings. You know, could Conor Gallagher do those sort of duties of N'Golo Kante? I don't necessarily think it could be the defensive side, I don't think Conor Gallagher can match that. Offensively, he can. He's got an engine. Uh, that's for sure, Conor Gallagher. Um, but yeah, this type of, type of a player, I don't really think Chelsea Football Club actually has it. Now, looking at a particular player that could have done this particular job, boom, official. And here we go, confirm. Aurelien Schoemeni joins Real Madrid on a permanent deal from AS Monaco for 80 million euros plus 20 million add-ons. Six years contract completed with final medical test on Tuesday. Now, a lot of people getting a bit uh, misconstrued about this particular price. They're thinking 100 million euros. Oh, well, that, that's the same price as Declan Rice. No, this is euros. Uh, Declan Rice is 100 million pounds. Um, so there's a big difference. Uh, go check that out on on, on, um, on uh, foreign, city, uh, foreign currency um, you know, conversion. But talking about this particular player, he's got everything. He could have been our Kante replacement. He can also do, um, you know, Jorginho uh, position as well. He's got the ball playing ability. He's got tenacity. He's robust, defensively strong as well. Offensively, his passing range, his vision is impeccable too. This is how you plan. Real Madrid has got this particular player on top of Camavinga. You saw what Camavinga, the kind of damage Camavinga did in the Champions League. Two of the world's most talented young midfielders going around, and Real Madrid has both of them. I want to quickly showcase to you uh, Real Madrid midfield. Um, there's, a, there's a picture that's going around. I really want to show you that. Um I hope I get that. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Modric, Casemiro, and uh, Cruz. And now they've got Valverde, Xiaomani, and Camavinga. Like, this is how you transition. <laughs> this is how you plan. This is how you transition. This is why it's so important to get transfer market correct. Um, and this is, this is their midfield. This is their midfield. I mean, they're set. They're set for the future. They really are now. In regards to Shermany's stats, I really want to show this, especially his heat map. First of all, he's 22 years of uh, age, so young, perfect. 185 centimeters, so it's not like he's short, he's fairly tall. Um, can play uh, center mid, defensive midfield, 
we've heard Cesc Fabregas say he can be an eight, he can be a six, he can play anywhere in midfield. This is what Fabregas said. And in League One, look, some of the ratings are excellent, man. Um, his ratings are impeccable. Overall, 7.3. And um, what I want to showcase to you is his heat map. Look at this heat map. Literally controlling the... This is the definition of controlling midfield. This is why people say he would have been the perfect replacement for Angelo Kante. Defensively and with the ball. The thing with Angelo Kante, with the ball, he's not always the greatest, but with sure many are going to get that. And defensively, look at... He's, he's literally on, on, on his own half, the red... Look at the red zone on his own half and the yellow zone is also... He's pretty much commanding those areas. And look at in the offensive area as well. The red zone and the yellow zone. He's, he's just in and around, just away from the final third. He's the man who controls. You know, if the team is looking to penetrate a, a low block team, he's the one who ensures that the opposition do doesn't come out of the box and he keeps recycling the possession around so that attacking players can... This is why... We were so over the, you know, we, we were so badly wanting a player like Shermany and not Declan Rice. If you see Declan Rice's heat map, it's a lot to do on the left side because he plays in a double pivot. Suchek is, is massively on the right side, the heat map, and Declan Rice on the left side. Declan Rice does not have a heat map like this. Now, if you deploy Declan Rice like that, perhaps he could. But you need to have the ability to control games, which Shermany does. Um and this, this is what we missed out on. This is what this is what we could have had as opposed to Saul. I don't know why we went with Saul. We should have just paid the money and got this particular player. And by, by the time, it, you know, we, we didn't do that. Sanctions came around last season, as we saw, and uh, Real Madrid pounced on the situation. Total played 35 games, started 33, 84 minutes per game. Um, three goals. I want to just look at the passing. Look at this. Um 87% uh, accurate passes, um, accuracy own half, 92%, opposition half, 81%, long ball, 65% is quite high as well, chip passes, 54%, um, look at this, interception per game, 2.9, very high, three interceptions per game, that's very good, reading the play and, and making sure um, that, that he is closing down everything, tackles per game, 2.5, um, errors leading into goal, zero, it's just very, very good, man. Total jewels won 64%. Ground jewels won 61%. Aerial jewels won 70%. Liga is not some sort of a rubbish league in terms of physicality. Like, if you think about why a lot of French players make it to, um, does well in, in the Premier League, generally, is because from the physical point of view, it's, it's similar. Um, obviously, Premier League is a lot more physical, but French League is, is not bad in terms of physicality. But... There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We've missed the trick in regards to replacing Angelo Kante with Xiaomeni. Xiaomeni now goes to Real Madrid. And Real Madrid, that midfield with Camavinga, Valverde and Xiaomeni, they're going to boss it. They're going to boss it. This is what I keep saying. It's so important that we get our transfer windows right. Not just this window. We need the next two, three, four transfer windows correct in order to make sure that, that we, we can start being you know, serious title contenders for years to come and not just Premier League, but every single competition that we play on. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what your thoughts are with Angelo Kante. How do you feel about Germany going to Real Madrid? I want to hear from you guys. Hope you've enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Till next time.